Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm reviewing the CyberPower UPS. This is the Intelligent LCD series and I opted for the 1350, the 1350 VA. So that basically converts to 810 watts. My advice with the UPS is they're not as just easiest of things to size for. Um, so always go bigger. Um, that way you're going to kind of cover yourself and you're not going to be overloading it and the less load you put in it, the longer run time you get. So the reason why I went for the Cyber Power is I have got a APC UPS, a bit on the costly side, and I thought I'd give Cyber Power a go because I've seen some some good reviews, heard some good things about them, so I thought I'd give them a give them a go. And like I said, this intelligent version, so it's got the LCD panel that shows battery draw, run time, um, voltage, um, if there's a power spike, overcurrents, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So we've got pretty good power in our area. The main reason for getting this is to handle, you know, brownouts or power spikes or anything like that. And typical recharge information there is eight hours. Kind of gives you an idea of what run times you get using different different products. This is going in my living room, so it's powering quite a bit of kit. So um, what I'm going to do is, is get it out of the box, um, show the unit check that it all works and I'm going to put it in and then see what kind of runtime I get. Right, so I've opened up the box, taken everything out, so what do you get? You get the unit itself, you get a UK, obviously in my case power cord to power it, and then you get an IEC C13, C14 cable to either extend that or to connect some devices to. Inside here you get a couple of bits and pieces, anything I'm bothered about really is the USB cable, and then you get an instruction manual and warranty, cable, uh, warranty card in there. So looking at the unit itself, so the build quality is okay, um, very plasticky, you know, you get what you pay for. This is the, I'd say, you know, kind of like the, just above entry level range because um, it's an intelligent unit. The, the next level of cyber power um, UPSs are more premium, but you have to pay for that premium build. Um, you also got to make some sacrifices for the price they, um, they churn these things out at. So first of all, powering it on nice power button glows blue so you get a intelligent front panel the top one is low capacity which obviously there's no load second one is battery capacity which is full and then you get a bit more information such as you know 230 volts output if you keep pressing this button it cycles through so you've got the kilowatt load so percentage load battery level so it's obviously 100 percent estimated runtime of 87 minutes and the obviously how many volts are coming into the unit which is zero so pretty basic information but quite nice um, the panel does turn itself off after so long it'd be nice if that stayed on and it draws more power but it does make the unit look a bit more a bit more premium so as you can hear it's got a, a bit of a noise to it but that's obviously because the fans are, are, are working because it's actually running on battery so this has actually got a four millisecond um, switch over time from mains to battery which is better than the equivalent APC it also comes with a three-year warranty on the unit and also three-year limited warranty on the batteries which are there's two of them they're lead acid free and they're customer replaceable so the switch over time is quicker and you get an improved warranty over the um, APC equivalent one of the reasons why I went for it because um, it seems like you know the functionality and the ability is there in, in if not better than APC so this is your um, battery backup and surge protection so you've got the IEC connectors so you can run a power block off that or kit directly and then what I like about these is you've got the typical um, 13 amp or should I say UK plug style so you can just run, run say like a 6 gang directly off that you've got the same replicated here a bit hard to see on the video but that's just surge protection so what I'd say is anything you want to have graceful shutdown or, or, or run when the power fails Go there if you just want things to have you know clean power and protected from surges connect them into there the more stuff you connect into here um the more runtime you got any critical stuff you connect there okay you got your fuse your power connection um rj45 in and out because it cleans that up as well fan and then i'm not sure i mentioned already but you've got your usb so this can connect to um, a, a nas drive or a pc and then using the power panel software, which is free, you can do things like graceful shutdown or see a bit more information about, you know, what's going on with the UPS, a bit more info than that's on the front panel. So 
what else is there to kind of explain? I think that's it really. So what I'm going to do is connect it all up. Right, so I've now got the UPS installed in position. So to give you an idea, I've got a PlayStation 3 powered on, a Virgin Box powered on, I've got a Netgear um, wireless router, Virgin Media Hub you can't see very well, I've got a Blu-ray 3D player playing, I've got a Netgear NAS spun up, I've got a Pioneer amp, PS4 turned on, the Tannoy sub connected to the amp, and I've also got a 55 inch TV with um, Fallout 4 on it. So uh, upscaling to 4K, so with all that stuff running off it on, I've also got another, you can't see at the back, BT um, high for the heating and another TP-Link um, 8 port gig ethernet switch. So we go to the front panel, let's see what kind of load we're putting on it. So as you can see right, we've, um, what was that, about 60% load, um, if we look at it's running normal. Um, it's a bit hard to read this display, so the output is 58, and that's um, percentage 57, 58%. That's obviously a kilowatt rate ratio. We've actually obviously at 100%. Estimated runtime is seven minutes, so that's not too bad considering we've got all that stuff connected and powered on. Obviously, it's not not all on at the same time usually, um, but you know, so that's not too bad. And also, the volt input is 233. 232 volts so within obviously the expected ranges so let's just uh, see so that's the kilowatt output 461 that's obviously 57% is 461 so let's just flick it over to uh, the um, just turn it off at the wall and check it so it's now making a bit of a hum now, and now it's on battery. So it's beeping crazily for five minutes runtime. So all that kit's powered on currently. So that's pretty impressive. Let's flick it back on. That's flicked back over. So. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, you know, with all that kit I'm running. Um, like I said, I don't have all this stuff on at once, but it just kind of gives you an idea of the, the runtime you can get from 810 watt um, UPS. And obviously, as I mentioned, you know, this is the uh, the cyber power. So there we go. Um, I've also got the, like I mentioned, the Netgear um, ready and as connected. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn all the other stuff off and see what kind of runtime I get from the, the NAS and you know other bits and pieces like the wireless, the network, just to see if I'm out and about, you know, if I wasn't in, if there was a power cut and both NASs were on replicating to each other, what kind of runtime I would get. So yep, stay tuned and I'll, I'll have that bit in. Right, so all I've got connected now is the Netgear wireless router, the um Things that have to be on like the Virgin Media Hub, the secondary hub and thing like the, the Hive. And then I've got the the Netgear NAS running and based on it being 83% charged, I'm going to get 33 minutes. So I'm expecting that to go to what, about 45 minutes on a, uh, a full load. Now, the Netgear and Synology both pick these UPSs up and recognise them. So I've got graceful shutdown of my... Um, NAS, my Netgear, so that's a secondary NAS, so when my Synology replicates to it, if, I, if we do have a power cut or a power surge or a spike that, you know, neither of my NASs are going to get damaged and they're going to continue and finish their uh, replication, their backup. Um, so, you know, it's quite good that the, the, the cyber power are now picked up by things like Synology and Netgear and more than likely QNAP and the, the other brands. So, so there we go, hope this review was of use, um, to kind of give you some idea of the runtime you can get, I don't ever mention this, but I bought this one off eBay, at, um, it was about £80 delivered, so value for money, you know, you can pack by these surge blocks and different other ways of kind of potentially protecting, but for £80, you know, it's worth, you know, investing in one of these, um, you know, you could could go for a slightly smaller one, but for, for £80, 810 watts, um, you know, seven minutes runtime, all the kit I've talked about, you know, I think it's 
very wise investment. So um, if you've got any questions, stick them below and I'll see if I can help. Thanks for your time. Bye.